Dear students, I welcome you to this lecture. It is all about learning, its meaning and nature. And at the same time, we will be discussing some of the major approaches confining to it. Ever since the dawn of human history, man has been struggling hard to respond to the environmental demands and influence. This is not true only to the human being. Every organism either makes use of the biologically inherited inborn modes or the learned responses to make different types of adjustments with the complex and dynamic environment. Unlearned responses having the hereditary base and background are the simple reflexes or the instinct tendencies. But beyond these simple responses, all activities are learned or modified either through experience or some sort of training. But how man learns? What goes in the process of learning is one of the Herculean tasks to answer owing to its very complex nature. Lot of controversies are there with regard to the process of learning. One of the earliest explanations of learning came from Aristotle when he declared that we remember things when they are similar, when they contrast, when they are contiguous. Psychological literature is flooded with all sorts of definitions resulting in five broad approaches to understand learning. We are here providing a brief account of all these approaches and it's hoped that we will reach a very comprehensive definition of learning. It is first behaviorist approach, then cognitivist approach, the third one that is social learning approach, humanist approach and the latest one that is constructivist approach. A general account of the mentioned approaches may help us to understand the very nature of learning. The behaviorist moment in psychology is credited to have looked to the use of experimental procedures to study behavior in relation to the environment. Emphasizing on the notion that internal thought processes are not observable, J.B. Watson, the first behaviorist, saw the environment providing stimuli to which individuals do develop response. Focusing on the stimulus response relations, behaviorists interpret learning as an associative process. A new association or connection is formed between a stimulus and a response. Thinking on the same lines, through his rigorous experimentations, the noted behaviorist Thorndike declared that responses get strengthened or weakened by the consequences of behavior. The very notion got refined by the famous radical behaviorist B.F. Skinner when he proclaimed, reinforce what you want people to do, ignore what you want people to stop doing. And evaluation helps us to reach to the three assumptions. It is first, learning is manifested by a change in behavior. The second one, the environment shapes one's behavior, that is, learning is determined by the elements in the environment, not by the individual learner. And the third one, the principle of contiguity and reinforcement are centered to explaining the learning process. Supporting the viewpoints of behaviorism, that learning is change in behavior and emphasizing the effects of external events on the individual, Hilgard, who wrote a famous book, namely Theories of Learning, he mentions that, quote, learning is the process by which an activity originates or is changed through reacting to an encountered situation, provided that the characteristics of change in activity cannot be explained on the basis of native responses tendencies, maturation, or temporary states of the organism, for example, fatigue or drugs, etc. Kimball in 1961 observed, learning is a relatively permanent change in behavioral potentiality that 
occurs as a result of reinforced practice. And it was the year when Gardner Murphy declared, quote, the term learning occurs every modification in behavior to meet environmental conditions. Summarizing the viewpoints, it becomes clear that to behaviorists, strengthening of the stimulus response bound through reinforcement becomes the only predominant factor for learning. But the drawback is clear. Learning becomes mechanical, leaving no room to leaving no room for the higher cognitive processes like thinking and reasoning. A simple response connection seems not sufficient to understand the process, the learning processes like creativity and problem solving. Now we are going to discuss the next approach that is the cognitive approach. Cognitive approach that emerged in the late 1950s emphasizes that learning is an internal process in which information is integrated or internalized into one's cognitive or intellectual structure. Learning occurs through internal processing of information, that is, how information is being processed by the learner. Internal processes include inputting, organizing, storing, retrieving and finding a relationship between information. New information is linked to old knowledge, schema and scripts. Here individual is seen as a perceptual organism who organizes, interprets and gives meaning to the events that impinge upon his consciousness. Here the driving concept is to make sense of events and phenomena. The individuality of the learner and his internal mental processes find a paramount and significant place in this approach. Robert Gagne, who looked at the events of learning and instruction as a series of phases using the cognitive steps of coding, storing, retrieving and transforming information, emphatically remarks that learning is something that takes place inside a person's head in the brain. Here we are having uh, an, another statement by Atmer and Newby. Uh, it is, learning is a change in the state of knowledge and is a mental activity when an active learner internally codes and structures knowledge. In the similar way, Marine and Kefila interpret learning as learning involves the reorganization of experiences in order to make sense of stimuli from the environment. Limiting the behaviorist explanations in terms of SR associations only to the simple forms of learning, cognitivists do emphasize the role that perception and understanding play in more complex forms of learning. Hence, complex tasks involving memorization, problem solving and thinking can be most easily understood within the framework of cognitive psychology. A cognitive explanation of behavior postulates that, postulates the existence of mental processes that operate on the stimulus in different ways depending upon the context in which the stimulus occurs and the individual's past learning experience to arrive at a response. Humanistic approach, which emerged in 1960s focuses on the human freedom, dignity and potential. Rejecting the notions of behaviorism that environment determines learning, humanists favor the notion that human beings can control their own destiny and their behavior becomes a matter of their choice. Human beings are the active agents in their own learning and not the helpless respondents to forces that act upon them. Motivation choice and responsibility, these are the things that are the influences of learning. Hence, learning is viewed as a personal act to fulfill one's potential. The key authors that need to be mentioned here are Abraham Maslow and Carl Rogers. They visualized learning as personal growth and development. 
from Maslow's perspective, the drive to learn is very much intrinsic. The purpose of learning is to bring about self-actualization. It contributes to psychological health, dignity and worth. Carl Rogers views learning as a function of the whole person and believes that learning cannot take place unless both the cognitive and affective domains are involved. The most beautiful exploration of a humanistic orientation to learning comes from Rogers, who saw the following elements as being involved in a learning process. Number one, learning has a quality of personal involvement. It is the whole person in both feeling and cognitive aspects, aspects who is being involved in the learning act or event. Number two, it is self-initiated. That means learning is self-initiated even when the impetus or stimulus comes from the outside, the sense of discovery, of grasping and comprehending comes from within. Learning is pervasive. That means learning makes a difference in the behavior and attitudes and in the whole personality of the learner. And there is the fourth one. Learning is evaluated by the learner. The locus of evaluation resides definitely with the learner. It is the learner who knows whether the learning act meets his her felt needs or not. Summing up the humanistic perspective, we can say that learning contributes to the development of a fully functioning, autonomous and self-actualized human being. Marine and Kefila note that people are inherently good and strive for a better world. People are free to act and behavior is consequence of human choice. Quite contrary to the behavioral notion that behavior is the result of consequences and the cognitive psychologist's belief that discovering knowledge is central to learning, the pivotal assumption of humanist approach is that a learner acts with his, her own intention and choice. Now, it is social learning approach. This learning approach is based on the belief that people learn from observing and interacting with others. The interaction takes place in social context. Man learns through observations by incorporating and imitating the behavior of others, taken as models belonging to one's social environment. The advocates of this theory emphasize that most of what we learn is acquired through watching the examples of others. We do acquire most of the features of personality. For example, we may uh, see aggressiveness, impulsiveness, politeness, industriousness, etc. We do imbibe these things through observing others who are around us. Albert Bandura, who is the authority in this very field, has recognized certain procedures that form the cornerstones involved in this kind of learning. Here is an hierarchy of uh, these things. Number one, attending and perceiving of the behavior. Number two, retention of the observed behavior. And it is the third one, behavioral rehearsal. And the last one, motivation to act the same way. Living rights. We do not blindly respond to environmental stimuli. Rather, we pick and choose from many environmental options basing our decisions on our own insights and past experiences. This we do through observational learning by incorporating and imitating the behavior of those who are around us. The authors supporting social learning approach are strict to see learning as a process of social participation. Rather than looking to learning as the acquisition of knowledge, they place it in social relationships. The social engagements provide the proper context for learning to take place. The nature of the situation impacts significantly on the process. Summing up, we do uh, put here uh, the famous words of Albert Bandura. Learning would be exceedingly laborious not to mention hazardous. 
if people had to rely solely on the effects of one's own actions to inform them what to do. Fortunately, most human behavior is learned observationally through modeling. From observing others, one forms an idea of how new behaviors are performed and on later occasions, this coded information serves as a guide for action. Now, we are having the last approach to learning and it is constructivism. This novel approach is having a widespread acceptance by cognitive psychologists, educators and curriculum designers. It is a view of learning based on the belief that learners are themselves the builders and creators of meaning, understanding and knowledge. Learning occurs by an active construction of meaning rather than by passive recipients. In order to make knowledge useful in a situation, the learners make a deliberate effort to make sense of the information that comes to them. They manipulate, discover and create knowledge to fit their belief systems. Jan Piaget, the famous cognitivist, emphasized that children learn best when they are active and seek solutions for themselves. The educational implications of Piaget's view is that in all subjects, children learn best by making discoveries, reflecting on them and discussing on them rather than blindly imitating the teacher doing things by root. Kille, in his theory of personal construct, views that we look at the world through mental constructs or patterns which we create. We develop ways of constructing or understanding the world based on our experience. When we encounter a new experience, we attempt to fit these patterns over the new experience. We are having an another tourist here, Tommy Fosnot, who defines constructivism by giving reference to four principles. Number one, learning depends on what we already know. New ideas occur as we adapt and change our old ideas. Second one, learning involves inventing ideas rather than mechanically accumulating facts. And here is the third one. Meaningful learning occurs through rethinking old ideas and coming to new conclusions about new ideas which conflict with our old ideas. Constructivist learning or the discovery learning moves from experience to learning. This learning dictates that the concept follows the action rather than precedes it. In a constructivist learner, centered setting, the learner is provided with experiences that allow them to hypothesize, predict, manipulate objects, pose questions, research, investigate, imagine, and invent. This approach fosters critical thinking and creates motivated learners. To sum up, by mentioning the remarks of Tommy Fosnot, who recommends that a constructivist approach be used to create learners who are autonomous, inquisitive thinkers who question, investigate, and reason. Going through all the discussed approaches, it becomes evident that there has been a good deal of controversy among psychologists about how to explain learning. Behaviorist approach offers a direct interpretation of the phenomena an interpretation that does not require postulating mental events intervening between a stimulus input and the response output. But this approach has not proved satisfactory as an explanation for more complex forms of human learning. The interpretations of the phenomena like memory, creativity and problem solving are readily available in the domains of cognitive approach to learning. The social learning approach seems somehow simpler when viewing learning in terms of observing to and imitation of others' behaviors. Humanistic orientation gave learning a broader meaning by viewing it from the perspective of the unlimited human potential 
for human growth and constructivism looks at learning from the learner's own discovery of knowledge and understanding. Dear students, let us conclude here by saying that uh, psychologists have uh, thought in terms of different perspectives and approaches in order to understand the real nature of learning. Thanks.